Yes, this motto is certainly political. Teachers are striking all across Guyana. And that strike is making waves not only on social media, but out in the streets as well. What started as something that was meant to be a one-day protest for better wages has transformed into a lot more. The teachers are crying out for better. Parents and many other citizens are supporting them. Meanwhile, others think that the teachers are being unreasonable and the government is calling the strike action illegal. I'm the unspecialist. Let's talk about why this nationwide strike by Guyanese teachers is indeed something political. Before we get into today's video, if you need serious legal help, listen to this message from today's sponsor, Washington Law Firm. Divorce is hard, painful, and complicated. After the heartbreak comes paperwork. Washington Law Firm specializes in helping you through that process. We know how hard endings can be, so we take your legal representation seriously. At Washington Law Firm, we provide serious help for serious legal matters like divorce. To book your free consultation, call 718-877-3100. Or find us at 455 Utica Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. If you'd like to advertise with us, be sure to make contact via our Facebook page. If you'd like to hire me specifically to host your events, for voiceovers, radio ads, or record other kinds of advertisement, you can also make contact using the same means. The beautiful voice that's in the ad on this video is available to you along with many others. Feel free to make contact and inquire about other services as well. First, let's begin by understanding how this industrial action started. The GTU had expressed their dissatisfaction with the government over its failure to engage in free collective bargaining since August 2020. When the government brushed off these complaints, the union suggested industrial action. Very early on, any suggestion of industrial action was characterized by the government as politically motivated. The Minister of Education and other government officials claimed that teachers were being manipulated by the GTU and members of the opposition party. These claims were accompanied by subtle and not so subtle statements and measures to attempt to discourage teachers from engaging in any form of industrial action. Despite these things, industrial action began on February 5th, 2024. Hundreds of teachers from all across the country went on strike yesterday as their union threw down the gauntlet to the government over its failure to engage in free collective bargaining since August 2020. As day one of the Guyana Teachers Union, GTU strike came to a close, the union expressed satisfaction with the turnout. General Secretary Coretta McDonald also vowed that should there be deductions by the Ministry of Education, MOE, from the salaries of teachers who participated, corporate sponsors have pledged to reimburse them. Meanwhile, in a statement last night, the MOE said that it is closely monitoring the illegal strike by the GTU. The statement further noted that the MOE accepts the opinion of the Ministry of Labor, MOL, that teachers who do not report for duty without a legitimate reason should not be paid. Further, for those parents whose children are being affected by the industrial action, the ministry has assured that they are providing educational content for students through various platforms. During an interview with Starbrook News yesterday, MacDonald noted that though in some areas there wasn't a large turnout, teachers were still on strike but remained at home. If you were to check the schools, you would see how many teachers were in those schools, the general secretary stated. We are heartened by the support we got today from our teachers. Our teachers have rubbished the calls coming from the ministry that our strike is political. Our teachers know exactly what they've been going through. And so, after being patient for four years, the teachers have decided we can't wait any longer. As a matter of fact, this action has been the last of the straws. MacDonald also noted that even the teachers on the Esikobo coast turned out to protest despite the presence of Minister of Education Priyamanik Chant. The minister was at the time visiting schools in the region to participate in the distribution of schools' cash grants. Whilst in the midst of the approximately 300 teachers protesting in front of the ministry's breakdown office yesterday, MacDonald explained that to the media, teachers are currently receiving 8,000 for uniform allowance, while learners are receiving 45,000 in total for uniforms and school supplies, and the government sees nothing wrong with that. 
She added that striking and protesting have been the last resort for teachers and the union because talks have failed ever since the year 2020. MacDonald also recollected that the government was asked to speak to the teachers' union, but to avoid doing such, the government selected 100 teachers for a discussion with the president at State House. The general secretary declared that the GTU is the only recognized organization within the country to speak on behalf of teachers. If you haven't, I recommend that you read that article by Starbrook News to get a good background on this particular situation. Now, let's get to the million dollar question. Is this strike political? And the answer is yes, but not in the way that you might think. This strike isn't political because of the GTU, the teachers, or even any alleged involvement by members of the opposition. This strike was transformed into something political by the Ministry of Education, government officials, state media, and the other media pages and houses that act as mouthpieces and even bullwhips for their favorite political party. As you can obviously see, the action was triggered by the GTU and teachers. Despite that, the government and media have consistently attempted to label the strike action as politically motivated and gone as far as to label it as illegal without a clear description or explanation about this alleged illegality. State media, specifically NCM, went straight to work with their attempts to delegitimize the protests by teachers. On their Facebook page, they posted graphics about what Guyanese say about the illegal GTU protest. In the postscript, you'll notice that it says the identity of this commentator is concealed to protect them from smear campaigns carried out by persons affiliated with the PNC, APNU, AFC. The text extracted from social media is the unedited real expression of concerned Guyanese. The irony of the graphic is that while it warns that they are protecting from smear campaigns by persons affiliated with those political parties, the graphics themselves are part of a smear campaign directed at the Ghana Teachers Union. Additionally, considering the statements unedited is a stretch, if not an outright lie, because the statements are obviously curated and selected to favor their narrative. The postscript itself implies the involvement or aggressive or negative action by the three political parties listed. These blatant contradictions bring into question the credibility of the journalism of the National Communications Network. Then again, many Guyanese have already recognized that the state media is simply a tool of whichever government is in power at the time. Which brings me to Ghana Daily News, which, as far as I know, is not an official media house. However, it is a very popular media page in Ghana. They also have jumped on the bandwagon in their attempts to delegitimize the GTU protest. They've made several posts about various issues or problems that the GTU has, allegations of money being mismanaged or mishandled by the GTU or specific members of the GTU. Once again, in an attempt to bolster the smear campaign against the GTU, as opposed to directly addressing the grievances of teachers. However, you don't have to take my word for it. You can easily go on NCN's page, Ghana Daily News, or any other media houses page to see their stance and what they're doing in relation to this particular protest. This brings me to the implications of the politicization of this particular strike. Labeling the strike as politically motivated or even illegal only galvanizes teachers across the country. It also creates the assumption that the teachers who are striking, not only in Georgetown or Region 4, but all across the country, are anti-government. But let's think about this simply. Let, let's think about this Critically, are we to assume that all these teachers all across the country are anti-government as opposed to pro-better wages? Are we to simply believe the assumption that these teachers are all supporters or triggered or were triggered by the opposition party? I don't think so. It is quite unreasonable to assume that all these teachers in all these regions are supporters of one particular party, as opposed to teachers who have seen the rising cost of living, seen their wages struggle to keep up, seen that their daily lives have become a bit more or maybe even a lot more difficult, and decided that it's best or in their best interest to engage in some form of industrial action to seek better conditions and better wages. 
What has become clear is that state communications and other media houses are simply attempting to deflect from the obvious problems and delegitimize the grievances of teachers all across the country. Ironically, these deflections and poor characterization has only served to unify the dissenters across the country, and it has shown how insensitive they are and how insensitive they can be. In reality, we don't need to discuss what the government has done or hasn't done. We don't need to discuss what the GTU has done or hasn't done. Either side's successes and failures aren't as important as other things in this matter. The same when it comes to the politicization of the strike. All these things are merely distractions. There's only one question that you need to answer. Do you think teachers deserve more? Of course, there'll be endless debates about and criticisms of the strike action, things that may have occurred in the strike action, and people talking about how they feel about it. However, that doesn't change the rights that teachers across Guyana have and the genuine fervent desire that many of them have to be able to live a better life on the wages that are paid to them. If you don't think teachers deserve more, or deserve better, that's fine. Then with that same breath, you could just as easily say that you don't think that the children deserve better education, better opportunities, a better environment, because as we can clearly see, the emigration rate for professionals is high. I've discussed nurses a few times. The same problems exist in the teaching profession. Guyanese teachers can go find better wages elsewhere. Or they can leave the teaching profession and just find another industry that employs and pays them better. When it comes down to it, you can certainly tell that many teachers, if not most of them, are in the profession for their love of education and their desire to raise up the next generation of Guyanese through education. The question of how well they're paid, the benefits they receive, and everything else that falls under that umbrella is simply a question of how much the government of the day values those teachers. That same question can be asked of any government at any point in time throughout Ghana's history. However, this industrial action is obviously directed at what's happening today. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Be sure to give the video a like and share it to keep the conversation going. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.